When you have a potentiometer wired like this, where you've got one leg connected to your positive supply and the other leg connected to your ground or your zero volts, um, and then you take the output off the middle pin, you end up with a really handy adjustable voltage selection. All the way up to your supply voltage, or, or nearly up to your supply voltage, and then all the way back down gradually to zero volts. So how does that work? Let's have a look. Right, potentiometers then. There's a couple of types, there's many types that you will find. Um, these are very common, they come in a lot of the kits that you might buy. This is another type, kind of a plastic version. This number here, this B103, that indicates the, resist, the total resistance value of this potentiometer. Um, and this would have a similar kind of number in, it's just you can't see it. So the one zero indicates 10, and the three indicates that you add three noughts on the end. So that's a 10K potentiometer, all right? Um, so if you look at this in a physical layout here, uh, and you've got the leg A, B, and C, I've labelled it. This kind of, you can imagine it in this arrangement. So there's the same leg there, A and the B and the C. You've got this resistive strip that runs around in a semicircle, and then your wiper blade works its way around there as you rotate the potentiometer. So the further this has to travel around that strip, then the more resistance there is, because it's got more of this resistive material for the current to get through, okay? That's the symbol for um, a potentiometer, same A, B and C legs, um, which tally with what you can see on the other two pictures. And, and you would wire it up something like that. You'd put that to your supply, that to ground, and that would be your output, okay? So if we imagine it like this then, this is a 10K potentiometer. This is the top view of the potentiometer in the real in the real sort of physical domain, if you like, and this is the graphical symbol representation. So this leg here is tied to five volts. This is tied to ground, and your output. Well, that's going to slide up and down this graph here as we wrote as we rotate the potentiometer. So you can see I've kind of done a gradient color on here. So the more that you go nearer this 5 volt supply, the redder it gets, indicating more positive voltage. And the closer you get to this ground leg, then the um, closer to 0 volts it will get. So if you put it right up there, turn it fully uh, clockwise in this instance, then you will get 5 volts, or near enough 5 volts, depends on the um, manufacturer, manufacturer of the potentiometer. And then if you take it right the other way, then you get 0 volts, or again, near to zero volts. If you go halfway, then you actually get two and a half volts. Now, if you've watched my voltage divider video, the one uh, I released a few days ago, then you'll understand this. So that effectively, you can imagine this is two 5K resistors now, because you're halfway on that resistive material. So you've got a 5K there, 5K there. The voltage divider circuit means I'm now getting 2.5 at my output. Um, if you then sort of broke this down and imagined lots of 2K resistors and you took this up here, you would get 4 volts uh, at this point here because so you've got 2K this side, sorry, uh, you've got 2K this side and 8K this side, so you would get 4 volts. Move it down again, you would have 3 volts, you've got 4 and 6K. Down again, you've got 2 volts and down again, you've got 1 volt. Now, in reality, this is infinite. You, you, this, this can slide as greater or smaller distance as, as you require by the adjustment of the potentiometer, okay? And if you want to use it as a variable resistor arrangement, you would wire it like that, basically. Um, you tie one leg to the, to the slider, the adjust slider, um, and then you take this, uh, the other side, as your output. Um, you don't have to tie this here, but what happens is when this slider 
goes up and down the resistive material, it can kind of skip along the surface and, and give a little bit of a bounce and stuff. So you'd have moments where this may, may completely disconnect along the resistive material. So you would go completely open the circuit for you know a, a very small fraction of a second. So doing it like this, you've always got at least 10K um, resistance going through. When you slide this up and down, you are just reducing down from that 10K, all right? Uh, or it might be a 100K potentiometer or a 1K potentiometer. They come in all different, different values. Um, so let's just have a look at a um, few examples then on, on the bench. Right, here's various types of um, potentiometers then. Uh, there's this one, it's a fairly good quality. These are your bulk standard type potentiometers you get in a lot of the kits. Um, yeah, you get them in various values. Uh, this is one that you would use to mount onto a PCB, much like I did here on this project. I can't even remember what this project was, but you can see I've got an adjustable potentiometer there. And I've got another one there by the looks of it. Yeah, that's a potentiometer. And that one is a 10K pot. You can just see maybe. Um, so you adjust that with a screwdriver. This here is not a potentiometer, that's a rotary encoder doing something. I can't remember what this was for. Um, what else we got? There's, a, there's another type there. Again, sort of through hole PCB mount, not very good quality. And this is my um, original ANS simulator, ambient noise simulator, if you've seen that project. But yeah, that's just a potentiometer there. I think it's the same type as that mounted inside. So all kinds of uses um, and come in various guises. Okay, that's potentiometers for you. Catch you later.